Yo, yo gamers, nature here. Today we're doing the full melee hunter guide for phase three in WoW season of discovery. We'll go over BIS gear, enchants, profession, spec, runes, rotation, pets, and consumables. Of course, I'll throw the timestamp in the description below for those looking to pop ahead. But first things first, I'm working on a range full hunter guide. So make sure you mash the like and subscribe button. It'll really help. Let's jump right into it. First, we'll go over professions. This phase, our best professions for single target DPS are as follows. Number one is actually alchemy. We have Flask of Everlasting Nightmares as a static 45 attack power buff, along with a mildly irradiated rejuvenation potion that provides some health, mana, and additional 40 attack power for 20 seconds. That, that's a mouthful to say. Uh, fair warning, this rejuvenation potion comes with some negative side effects that can make it not worth like reducing your movement speed. However, we're obviously assuming opti optimal conditions when we say that it's BIS. Number two is enchanting. This provides a static 50 attack power buff with enchanted sigil of living dreams. Number three is leatherworking. This isn't that far behind the other two and you can craft the phase two helm along with the new shoulders for the face, making this a really close third option. Number one, for overall damage or for like speed runs is engineering. However, number four and just static single target DPS is engineering. So it depends what you're doing, but it is number one for overall damage and for speed runs because of the combination of sapper charges, dynamites, and obviously utility like rocket boots, etc. the chicken, we could go on all day with utility. Now, once you pick your professions, you'll either want to take one of two paths. As a quick note, before we dive into gear and season of discovery, bosses are only two levels above us. Unlike WoW Classic, where they're three levels above us. So the hit cap for classes in Season of Discovery is 6%. And if you have the plus five weapon skill, like an orc using an axe, it's 5.5%. Even going into more detail as a melee hunter, you'll still get soft value over the hit cap since your offhand white hits require much more hit and have glancing blow damage that can be reduced with weapon skill as well. So let's go over your BIS gear for phase three, keeping the hit in mind. We have two paths we can basically take. The first path goes over if we chose the professions that like, like enchanting and alchemy, maybe we don't have any professions or, or basically just professions that don't have the crafted gear. In this path, we'll go rank seven helm in shoulders. Those are fairly easy to get. Um, so we'll want to push for those. There's a couple items out of BF, uh, out of Sunken Temple. And then we go back with the shoulders. We have the, the Nomergon shoulders as well that are really good if you can't get rank seven. But on neck, we can get the new Bloodstained Charm of the Sunken Temple or use Nomergon Peace Officer's Torque from phase two. Cloak, we want Panther Fur Cloak from ST or Black Veil Cape from BRD. Chest, legs, and boots are pretty easy. We want the full three piece set out of Sunken Temple, because this is gonna be huge with the set bonuses. I mean, 2% crit, 20 AP, and then our rapid fire is gonna give a 10% melee haste during the rapid fire duration of 15 seconds. That's huge. Wrist, optimally, we'll want to use Warsong Exalted Bracers. If this is too much for you, we can get experimental aim stabilizers from Nomergon. Those are our close second, followed by Stone Princess Bracers out of Maradon as a close third. Gloves of the Pathfinder, are an easy grab from Winterfall activity quest in Winter, uh, Winterfall. Dark Vision Girdle is the best in slot in this build because we're lacking hit in um, that department. While Girdle, the Bestial Swiftness, this is an honorable mention, you guys. It's about five to eight DPS behind if you um, don't need the hit. But then assuming you're already at the 6% hit, it does become your best option here. Rings, we want Blackstone Ring, Band of the Wilds, or Drake Claw Ring. All three of those have the exact same DPS stats. With Trinkets, Dark Moon Decay and Sandstorm have the highest static DPS output. As a side note, on a quicker encounter under 60 seconds, Devil Sword Eye is better. And don't forget, you can feign death to get out of combat in Trinket Swap. So Devil Sword Eye is a great option. It should be part of your BIS lineup as well. Keep in mind too, on multi-target pulls or encounters, uh, Sandstorm as well does an AOE. So that is great and you'll wanna factor that in. Now, if you're not in the market, 
to farm the Dark Moon cards. A couple of honorable mentions here are Breath of the Beast and Rune of the Guard Captain. Even after the nerfs to the Dark Moon cards, these do lag behind them about 40 DPS on single target, and that's if you need the hit. If you don't need the hit, they actually lag behind more about 55 DPS. So you'll want to get the Dark Moon cards if you have the means and are, are looking to get those purple parses. The next build uh, path is very similar. However, if you picked up either leatherworking or engineering, we'll just sub those items in as needed. If you're leatherworking, we'll pick up the glowing neural linked cow. This is actually a pretty big upgrade on the head slot. It's about 18 DPS over the second best in slot. On the shoulders, you can grab either shrieking spaulders. Uh, this would be for someone who wants to do both ranged and melee since the proc on this actually works for both or we can grab Paranoia Mantle. I wouldn't really recommend this, but this does do about one or two more DPS, but the proc is limited to melee only, so you're not gonna get the range value here out of this one. If you're engineering, grab Hyperconductive Gold Wraps if you need the hit, or Girdle of the Bestial Fury if you do not. So you'll still go the Girdle if you don't need hit, but the Hyperconductive Gold Wraps are an upgrade if you do. In Void Powered Slayer Van Bracers, I know they're only one agility upgrade over here, um, so it may not, not be worth the investment, but don't forget about the proc. Um, you can actually, the on use, will um, block fear for 15 seconds. That's actually huge um, on some encounters or, or some trash as well. So on weapons, we want Gurubashi Pit Fighter's Bow from the STV event. Um, this does the 75 strength proc. Um, we'll obviously wanna have this in our best lineup, but as a side note, it's definitely worth grabbing the Bloodthirst Crossbow out of STV event as well. Or you can grab the Dreadstalker's Hunting Bow out of Sunken Temple in case you switch to range at any point. So um, for, for range, we'll want those three options, but for uh, melee DPS in our weapon, we'll wanna go one-handers, of course. Our Priebus is really, really strong. We'll wanna grab Thrash Blade from completed Seeds of Corruption in Maradon, and um, we'll wanna grab the Warsong Revered Sword. This Priebus is so good, we really don't upgrade um, anything in between from Priebus to Bis. We just go straight for our Bis from here. So there's not a lot of steps or options. In fact, most of the other items that you could grab or pick up are straight just downgrades from these two. We'll wanna go from these items straight to Cobra Fang Claw in our main hand and Dragon's Cry offhand. Now, Axe of the Adelaide Executioner is a close second um, in the main hand. However, for Orcs, um, since they have the axe skill, it actually switches over and becomes Biss for orcs. So Adelaide Executioner is a great pickup for us as well. On enchants, for helm and legs, we want Libram of Veracity for the plus eight agility. This can be pretty expensive, but you basically get the Libram, which you can buy on the auction house, which right now is about 400 gold where, where I'm at. Then take it plus the required items to the NPC and burning steps to turn it in. Shoulder enchant, we have the new plus 15 attack power enchant. You can get this by grabbing the blue fast flask of nightmarish mojo. Again, you can actually purchase this on the auction house. Then you turn it in on ZG Island. The rest are pretty basic um, and we should be used to these in classic if you played before, but three agility to cloak, three stats to chest, braces we can either grab plus seven or plus nine strength plus seven agility to gloves this is a very expensive enchant it, you can get plus five super super cheap so it's basically like 80 gold versus two gold and then we <clears throat> then we can also get plus seven agility on boots same exact thing applies so that's a pretty expensive so you can also get plus five as the cheap option for weapons we'll want sniper scope for range weapon even though we don't use our bow a lot it's worth picking up since it's cheap and for the weapons we'll want to grab plus 15 agility on each of our one-handers however that could be pretty expensive so if you're in the budget market again we can pick up fiery enchant it's about six to ten dps behind but it's roughly about like one fourth one fifth of the cost so it's a lot cheaper um now that we got like the gear enchants professions we got that stuff out of the way let's go over the spec and first, um, I'll, I'll address the elephant in the room here. True Shot Aura 
is like really, really strong right now. Basically, it provides 80 to 150 DPS on average to every single melee player in your group. And remember, hunters get double benefit from true shot aura um, that the other melees don't. So if you're in a melee group and you do not, I repeat, you do not have true shot aura, so there's no other hunter in your group, we'll want to actually go marksman melee hunter. This is about 60 to 80 DPS loss for us on our, our own personal DPS. Uh, but remember, it's 80 to 150 DP, DPS gain for every other melee in our party. So it'll obviously be a net positive. Now, before I go over this, it's almost all ranged talent centered around us doing melee DPS output. So almost none of these uh, talents matter at all. And it, it don't matter what you pick here. Basically, you just need true shot aura. Then you go over to the, to the survival tree. You get three out of three monster slain, three out of three humanoid slain, and two out of two into savage strikes. Everything else here, you guys, is completely optional. And you can pick what you want based off your play style and your raid. Whatever you want to do doesn't really affect your damage at all. Here's two choices I chose, and I'll explain why. Basically, the side idea here in the marksman tree is I don't need like aim shot as a melee hunter. Obviously, I don't need to reduce my cooldown on arc chain shot. Um, and you know, I, basically everything in gray here, I, I'm not gonna need. So I avoided all of those talents. Now, if you want any of these, this build, go right, at, right ahead. There's nothing wrong with it. And uh, these are all uh, very viable in certain scenarios and very viable in certain playstyles. With all that being said, this build, when it comes to AOE, like trash damage, uh, my, my idea here and what I was doing is switching to range. I can flip my runes, throw on explosive shop, trap launcher, lock and load, and just absolutely blast AOE on pools, especially on those pools with like the ghosts where you can get one shot. Um, it, when you have world buffs, switching this on and, and throwing that up is, is a big plus in my eyes. In fact, I just did a speed run with my guild where we got number eight world and, and I did this exact build. The VOD in the, is in the description below for anyone that's interested in watching. If you really want to min-max this, you can even do a full 180 on your runes here, add sniper training, TNT, exposed weakness, even like master marksman if somebody else is running kings or lion. Um, so again, this build has options. You basically only need true shot aura and the eight points into survival tree. That's literally it. Everything else you can do, whatever you want, um, and, and I'd say everything's viable based off your skill and play level. As a side note, if you do not plan on weaving in range DPS with this build, pick up the new STV event bow and this Red Soccer's Honey Bow um, that I talked about, along with Mithril Gyro Shot Ammo, which can be converted into the arrows via the new Emerald Reputation Vendor, um, which you just need level friendly to do. Now that we got kind of that elephant out of the way, uh, we'll go over the best build for melee hunters, which is Beast Mastery Spec, of course. This is about 60 to 80 DPS over the previous marksman build we went over. However, if another hunter is providing true shot aura, this jumps up another 150 DPS. So this is making that about 210 to 230 DPS over the marksman build that we just went over. So in reality, if you wanna parse like purple, if you wanna perform at your highest level, Go find another hunter bunny that's either range DPS marksman or melee D B DPS marksman. Put them in the raid so you can get the true shot aura. Um, let's go over it though. We'll start off with five out of five into improved aspect of the hawk or five out of five into endurance trainer. Um, either or is fine here, you guys. However, in season of discovery, our pets do have avoidance. So basically your pet should never die unless if you make it like a dramatic error or somebody in your raid like your tank makes a dramatic error and your pet is taking full direct damage because remember like these side damage the aoe damage that's not going to kill or really affect your pet almost at all so it needs to take direct damage to really die or have endurance training be useful at all if this is common like if your raid's bad if you're maybe less experienced, maybe you leave the taunt on your pet sometimes. 
well, grab the endurance training. With that being said, though, improved aspect of the Hawk, it, it is a ranged ability, but there is times on like the dual Drake's Dream Scythe that you'll want to weave in ranged abilities. So technically, improved aspect of the Hawk is the BIS option here. Then we'll go improve revive pet or thick hides, kind of same rule of thumb as endurance training here. None of these points really matter to your overall DPS, so put them where you want to. Five out of five, unleash fury, five out of five, curiosity, intimidation, uh, two out of two, bestial discipline. At this point, you'll have two extra points that you can go and put wherever you want. For example, bestial swiftness is great for PVP, but really any pickup is fine here based off your play style. Myself, personally, I do speed running, so I went pathfinding um, to min max in, in that category. Five out of five, frenzy, and then we'll finish it off with bestial wrath. We then hop over to the survival tree. We'll go three out of three monster slain and three out of three humanoid slain since Sunken Temple has both types of mobs with the last two points going into Savage Strikes. Again, you'll now have an extra two points. Um, there is no wrong answer here. You can put those two points that you have extra wherever you want. Now that we went over like the builds, Let's pit touch base on runes. They're the exact same regardless of what build that you choose. On head slot, we can go cat-like reflexes. This should be your go-to for most single target encounters. However, assuming you have three piece of the, the phase three tier gear, this makes it so rapid fire also increases melee haste slightly. So on a longer encounter over three minutes, this could be a win assuming you have good RNG on your flanking strike and it's resetting constantly, meaning your, your cat-like reflexes rune wouldn't be necessary. To be honest, I'm gonna stick with the cat-like reflexes rune, uh, but it is worth notating that in some scenarios, rapid killing could be a little bit better. On chest, Aspect of the Lion is still gonna be king for our Beast Mastery build. However, in the Marksman Melee build, if we have kings from another source, you can actually go Lone Wolf and it'll add about 10 DPS overall or even go Master Marksman netting about 10 DPS um, as well. So you can go off of the lion as long as you have another hunter or paladin um, in the raid providing the lines or king's buff. As a side note, in the run I brought up earlier, our guild got number eight world speed run. I went Lone Wolf because I was switching to range and that would give my explosive shot a massive AOE increase as well, since that would beef that up. So that's an option too, if that's your play style. Wrist, we grab the new Raptor Fury, which is absolutely a must for melee hunters. This new rune, it adds a stacking debuff every time that we Raptor Strike, doing 15% increased damage, stacking up to five times or 75% damage over a 15 second duration, which is huge. Hands will usually stick to Beast Mastery for single target. However, on the Marksman Melee build that we went over, um, Carve is actually better on two or more targets in your rotation. While in the Beast Mastery build, it's better on three or more targets. And then as a quick side note, if we went on the chest rune, let's say we went Lone Wolf, well, Beast Mastery rune wouldn't really apply here. So we would just use Carve in that scenario. On Waste, um, legs and feet will simply just go the the normal path here for melee we get melee specialist flanking strike and dual wield specialization as far as our rotation we'll use a priority based system this means we don't have a specific order that we repeat rather we just use what's best first and prioritize that if that's um basically down then we'll use whatever's next so on and so forth. So the order here is Raptor Strike is number one prio. We'll always use that first if it's up. Even though Flanking Strike benefits your Raptor Strike, it's just not that good enough to prioritize it over the Raptor Strike. So again, Raptor Strike first prio. If that's down, we'll use Flanking Strike. If that's down, then we'll use Wing Clip. And we're basically using Wing Clap, uh, Wing Clip to try to get like the Wind Fury Wild Strike procs as well. Now we'll insert Carve um where it's viable basically basically if you're on multi-target pools of two or more we'll put carve right above the wing clip if we have three plus mobs we'll put that actually above flanking strike 
and five or more mobs will actually put carve above the raptor strike um in that scenario as well we'll want to use feign death if necessary for in combat but we'll feign death explosive trap with pets it's hard to say exactly what's better when we look at sims when serpent edges out cat by about six to ten dps however this is based on standard uptime and armor values and buffs etc the more i played around with the two pets the more i realized it doesn't matter as much the two pets are kind of a wash for melee hunter on our quicker fight one that's maybe ranged heavy like dream scythe or has higher armor values wind serpent uh comes out on top on the flip side on a longer fight um or with like lower armor values a cat actually comes out on type top so however with the cat make sure you grab 2.0 attack speed to min max your flanking strike there's a level 50 cat on jaguaro island in stv that can be grabbed if you need a quick upgrade and for the wind serpent the best thing to do is to grab um, any of the level 50 elite wind serpents running around sunken temple in the dungeon just make sure your raid doesn't kill it like they did with mine the first like three times that i tried to do it overall i'd say wind serpent does edge out the cat so per sims on average it is coming out on top most of the time um and it's usually it's usually ahead again about six to ten dps so if you put a gun to my head i would pick wind serpent and it also plays to some of those fights that kind of are like ranged uh friendly like dream scythe um now uh basically we'll fast forward here all right now for everybody's favorite topic let's go over consumables and world buffs we'll pick up dark moon fair if it's up of course along with the new fervor of the temple explorer this is grabbed when someone turns in the epic quest item off the last boss in sunken temple very similar to the previous two phases also don't forget about songflower this is an insanely good buff for hunters as a side tip grab nova world buffs it's an add-on this will display when each songflower timer is up for each layer when it respawns and as long as the person who originally picked it also has nova world buffs it'll display it perfectly on the timer for you so you can easily grab it and you won't need to like cure the plant like you normally would um, if you just click it as soon as it respawns because it will already be in the cured ver version so for consumables we have a lot i mean fair warning i'm not going to go over every consume for every scenario um i'll Put down a basic list for dps consumes for people wanting to like purple parse right we will pick up mongoose fire water elixir of giant oil of immolation dragon breath chili fortitude defense and troll blood are something that i use that just gives you additional stats sapper for engineering or dense dynamite or even like high yield radi radiation um box of chocolates these actually do work from the Valentine's Day event and it provides you a 2% hit if you stocked up on them last phase. Um, you can actually find people that that have these and purchase them. Um, they, they are expensive. They're about 50 gold right now on, on my server. The new Adelaide Mojo of War. You can get this by completing the new Potent Potables on ZG Island. Just bring a flask of a Adelaide Mojo. Enchanted Sigil of Living Dreams for enchanting. If alchemy, the mildly irradiated Reju Potion and Flask of Everlasting Nightmares, Dense Sharpening Stones or Shadow Oils, Greater Arcane Elixir, Grilled Squid, Black Label Rum for some stamina, Boggling Root does about 3 DPS, nothing huge, but um, you also have Elixir of Coalesce, Free Action Potions, um, these are there to avoid CC, so these will be necessary on some fights. Um, like Jamala John every other week to min max your damage for pets we'll want the 13 strength scroll and 13 agility scroll and finally for mana if you do have any mana issues I know horde doesn't because um, of the the shamans right now but you'll want to pick up major mana potions in demonic runes as well now I'm sure I forgot a couple like utility consumables there's obviously a lot you can bring in certain scenarios like swiftness potions in speed runs or even like trinkets um, and other items that are viable like nifty stopwatch but this this isn't that list it's just a basic DPS consumable list so that's all I wanted to go over hopefully this helps y'all pump in phase three as melee hunters I'll be releasing a range full guide here soon so make sure you mash the like and subscribe and if you're really feeling like a croc join the croc nation other than that you guys peace